Jazz is an improvisational form of music. The idea is to play a, a, a song, improvise on it, put your own ideas into the song without losing the, 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 the melody of that song, and use a lot of syncopations and uh, 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 accidental notes that uh, that weave into weave and bob and weave into uh, melodies, into pretty melodies. And the idea is to to make it have it make sense. You don't lose the context of the song. There's 32 bars to a song. You play those 32 bars in order, but uh, you're improvising on it and just playing some of your own ideas and and uh, with a rhythmical with a beat that is never changed is very steady and uh, that's about what, what jazz is really to me jazz is america that's the that's the only art form in the united states of america that's the only art form that's completely american it didn't come from any other country that's why it's so popular in other countries in europe the jazz musician the american jazz musician is considered a king in in, uh, in europe not in america but in in europe uh, the jazz musician is like, wow, that's why Johnny goes to Switzerland and, and Germany and they treat him like, you know, a big deal because uh, they, they know what they've got. You know, they know what the jazz music is. They, they really appreciate it, more so than in his own country. Prophet is without honor in his own country, isn't that what they say? You know, you just kind of lay back, think about it, just, just kind of enjoy it. That's all you have to do is enjoy jazz because that's what makes it nice. That's what makes it great. Um, and it becomes part of you, your soul. Not to be too dramatic, but really, it just becomes part of you. My mother introduced me to the piano. I started playing when I was 10, and uh, after about five years of classical piano, Mozart and Beethoven and all those guys, my father introduced me to some jazz records. I listened to them very carefully, and I f just fell in love with several piano players that were just great. and. Uh, I got a couple of jazz books that taught me chords and uh, how to play jazz music. I mean, not really teach you how to play, you have to, that's instinctive. But uh, it taught me uh, something about the chord structures of songs and, and uh, the structure itself of songs. And I just worked on that and after about three years more, by that time I was 17, 18 years old. I was out going out to jazz clubs and listening to different musicians and meeting them, talking with them. Eventually, they would ask me to sit in for them, which was to me a, a great step. Some of the piano players I met were very instrumental in me getting started. One was Joe Sullivan, a piano player from Eddie Condon's School of, of Music, and uh, Joe Sullivan was his piano player for a while. And I got to meet him and another very special piano player, Willie the Lion Smith. He was a great uh, piano player from Harlem, stride player, and uh, from the, the 20s and, and 30s in Harlem. And uh, he took a liking to me and used to invite me to sit in with different uh, orchestras and different clubs that we were playing that we'd visit. And he'd see me in the audience and he'd call me up and say, you play the next set for me.
traditional jazz is fabulous. Those old, not old, I shouldn't say, the traditional uh, Phil Napoleon, Eddie Condon, those names of, of the swing jazz and the great Dixieland jazz that you just you don't get to hear anymore, except maybe on a CD. Uh, and Swing 7, Johnny's got a, a, C, a Swing 7 band that's fabulous. So. And you get to hear them sometimes at jazz festivals and things like that. But they're just, mar you know, marvelous uh, jazz bands. And it's exciting. It's really exciting. It's fun music. It is fun music. It's not way out music. Sometimes people are afraid of jazz music because they think, oh, it's way out. I don't understand it. I don't get it. But, you know, you just kind of lay back, think about it, just, just kind of enjoy it. That's all you have to do is enjoy jazz because that's what makes it nice. That's what makes it great. The jazz part of um, uh, my life began with him. It did. And on our second date, this is funny, on our second date, uh, it was at the Roney Plaza. He was playing. I would meet him after work. After I finished work, I'd go in. I met him. And I look up at the bandstand and I look and I saw, guess who I saw him playing for? Your guy, Louis Armstrong. The greatest jazz musician that ever lived, Louis Armstrong. Wow. Was that exciting? I mean, you know, for somebody, I was a new new kid on the block. I was just out of school. And here I'm looking at Louis, and he's playing for Louis Armstrong. Boy, was I impressed, huh? Wow, was I impressed. So it was it was very exciting. It was an exciting time for, for both of us, you know, to meet at that time. And I, I, I knew he was a great, great uh, musician, just knowing that he played for Louis Armstrong. How did it make you feel when you first saw your name up in the lights? <laughs> well, it's uh, strangely enough, the first time I saw my name up in lights, they spelled it wrong. <laughs> I was shot. I was ready to go home and not, not play, but of course I didn't. I, I corrected that for the future. Uh, it was just a, a, a small gig in Brooklyn, and uh, I'm trying to think. We made about four or five dollars for the for the gig. I mean, it didn't pay very much. It was an incidental thing, and uh, that was that wasn't bad money for a, for a 17 year old kid to be making it back in 1947 or so. Wow, it's a long time ago, isn't it? There's there's one great venue uh, which is reminiscent of Carnegie Hall in New York. It's uh, Ruth Eckert. Theater, and uh, yeah, I've, I've played there. I played there with the Betty Goodman band, uh, with uh, uh, headed by uh, a cl fine clarinet player of today, one of the younger crop of musicians, uh, Ken Poplowski, and he's uh, he played the Benny Goodman role, and I played the Jess Stacy and Teddy Wilson roles on that on that band. It was a big band with a small group in between because Benny used to have a 16-piece band and then he'd have a sextet and then a quartet and a trio. And uh, it, uh, it was, I grew up with that music. I, I love these guys and I love the way they played and my style of music kind of picked up on them, as, especially the piano players, of course. And uh, yeah. Yeah, we play there. It's a great hall. It's uh, like Carnegie Hall. The acoustics are fabulous, and you don't even need microphones there. You just play, and uh, it just comes over. It's beautiful. When, when you're sitting there and you look out into the audience, and you see 1,000 people, or 1,200, or however many it holds, uh, I played in some great concert halls in Europe, too, where 
God, I mean, thousands of people with balconies and tears. And even, there was one place in Amsterdam, I believe it was, where we were playing on stage, and they had the audience with the crowd was filled. And they had people on a, another grandstand behind us on the stage. It was, it was incredible. You come down a huge stairway as they announce your name, and you walk down this stairway, you say, I hope I don't trip. <laughs> And uh, you play there, it's just, it's just as, I mean, all those people, it's, it's nothing like it. To have them quietly listen to every note you play, it's amazing. Tell me how it felt in Sacramento at the Jazz Festival. How did it feel to be labeled as the Emperor of Jazz? Oh, wow. Uh, it, was, it was nice, it was a, an honor, I guess. Yes, it was an honor, of course. Um, there were a lot of, every year there'd be a different musician would be uh, entitled to, to be called emperor. Uh, they had trump a trumpet player, Tom Saunders, clarinet player, Chuck Hedges, trombone player, Bill Allred, and the drummer, Jake Hanna, great drummer. He's, uh, he's on that uh, album. Uh, and then when it came to the piano, they chose me, which I thought was great because there's a lot of good piano players uh, in Sacramento for that festival. And that, uh, it's, yeah, it was an honor. I used to wear a, 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 what do they call it, sash, Emperor so and such, such and such a year. And I can't remember what the year it was. And that's weird. But uh, that happens. I love jazz festivals, and it feels good because if you, I'm a singer sometimes, you know, I have sung with Johnny and I've sung with others too, and uh, that's great because he's a, he's a real good pianist and he can, he accompanies terrific. Um, just ask other musicians, because the musician, you know, when the, when the musician plays a solo, he, um, he wants Johnny behind him, because Johnny's one of the best people to accompany you, and that's great. Uh, because he plays just the right little thing behind whatever the, the instrument is. And, uh, and that's great because it makes his, the other guy's solo behind him wonderful. It makes it just the right. He doesn't play too much. Everybody's always playing too much. Oh, I'll make him, I'll make him sound really good I, so I'll sound really good. Not Johnny. Johnny just a little touch here and a little touch there and just make him sound wonderful. That's, that's class. John's a class act. It's been a great pleasure to be involved in this kind of music. I grew up in it, in the period when it was so strong and so uh, plentiful. Uh, it is the, the greatest music. There are a lot of young players around today that are continuing carrying this on. People like Randy Sankey, Dan Barrett, uh, Ken Poplowski. These are the, uh, the the young people that are still playing, going to keep this music going. And uh, what we need also is more, more listeners, because the listening audience has gotten older too. And uh, a lot of the people have, are gone that listen to it, but a lot of young folks are starting to realize that there's something more than just rock and roll. It, it is a great, pure, pure music of jazz, and I'm so glad to have been involved in it, with it, and I just hope it continues forever. I would like to ask you a personal question, if I may. Uh-oh. I was wondering, after you are no longer here with us, after Johnny Vero is no longer with us, what would be the thing that you would like to leave to the world? What would be the legacy you would want everybody to know about yourself? Well, Rachel, you, you were a great help to me in that answering that question. This documentary you were doing will afford me a, uh, a, good, uh, a good story about myself. I appreciate it. Uh, it'd be all about my music, I guess. I can't think of anything else, and uh, 
I just hope that the people, uh, the world and the jazz lovers will uh, be playing my records for years to come. And consequently, with that in mind, it keeps you alive somehow. So that I would appreciate very much, and thank you for doing this wonderful thing. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>